Yeah, like right here. Hello and welcome to Cat's Creations where tonight um, we are going to, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a tree topper bow. I went through all my videos and I was like, I could have sworn that I had a video there teaching you all how to make a tree topper bow. Um, so we're going to be using a Pro Bow the Hand. This is the large model and I'm going to show you and describe what we're doing and we're going to be making this really pretty uh, North Pole kind of look. We're doing a little bit of the candy cane print. Um, we're going to be doing a solid red glitter and then this one is a red white tan with just a touch of pink. Um, so these are the three colors that are going to be in our tree topper bow. I prefer to use all two and a half inch ribbon. You'll understand why when you see it at the very end because the larger the, the width of your ribbon, the more full your bow will be. So, um, before we start, I want to say welcome. And if you want to keep a copy of this video on your Facebook page where it's easy to find when you get ready to make your own tree topper bow, um, just click the share button at the bottom. That will automatically share it to your Facebook page where it's so much easier to find. Also, if you want to check out all of my other videos, you can find them on YouTube under Cat's Creations Reese. And um, was there anything else that I'm missing that I normally like? Because I like kind of got out of the whole spew of how we're going or or what we're doing. So I just thought it'd be fun to do a quick tree topper uh, video. So that's what we're doing today. So you will need to have a Pro Bow the hand in order to put this one together because this is how we're doing the demo. Um, everyone has a different version of how they will do this. This is just my version. Um, so what you're going to want to do is on the probo of the hand you have these little rows and you want to go with the largest setting because this is going to yield us the biggest bow which is like bows that are going to go on really large presents. This would look really amazing on a door, like if you were going to put it on a door and maybe wrap your door for the holidays, this is the perfect size bow for that. It would also be the ideal bow to put at the top of your tree. And then if you would like, you can have, you can add longer tails, which I'm gonna show you how to do. Um, and then you can wind your tails down into your tree and then go ahead and add your coordinating um, ornaments and lights and everything else. But um, you want to make sure that you have a peg in every single one of the holes that go all the way through. And sometimes people make bows without the center peg. This one, you're going to want to make sure that you have your center. And then this is going to be basically our tie-off point. So all of the ribbon, um, this one came from Kringle Designs. Um, this Renaissance ribbon, I believe, came from Shinoda and then the candy cape stripe one is from craft outlet when you're setting up your ribbon to get ready to make your bow you're going to want to make sure that all of your ribbon is spooled and running in the same direction so like mine right now it's all kind of coming off the right hand side this is coming off the right this is coming off the right you don't want to have like one coming off the left and then other ones coming off in different directions you want them all the same so when you're pulling them, you're basically saving yourself an extra step and doing three at the same time. I'm trying to think if there was anything else I missed um, that I want to instruct. If you guys have questions throughout the tutorial, um, let me know and I'd be happy to answer the questions for you. And um, we are using 26 gauge wire. So we are going to first of all, prep this part which is just take your wire and you basically want about 24 inch piece so here's 24 inches since this is so thin we can go ahead and cut it with the scissors um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of have this folded in half for and I'll, you'll see a reason um, just having that prepped just makes it that much easier and then we're going to do the same with another piece. This one I'm going to do a little bit longer. I'm going to do this one about 30 inches. 
And we'll go ahead and put that away. We're we'll gonna do the same thing. Find middle point and just kind of put a little kind of curve in it so that I can pick these up really quick when I need them. So you will need two pieces of wire. Okay, so we're not gonna worry about the folded edge because some people are like, should you, um, you know, worry about your folded edge piece? It won't really matter um, on your treetop or bow because what we're doing is we're gonna be building from the center of our bow. And then as we get down towards the outside, this is going to be the bottom of our bow. So let me go ahead and just do this really quick because I know this will bug me. Irina asked me to give you a your bow dabber for this. Hi, by the way. Hi, Irina. The bow dabber? Mm, no, because I think it would generally go a little too thick because we're going to be putting three sets of ribbon on every single one of those pegs. And if you can imagine this being the center of the bow dabra, then you have three, 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 all the way through. I don't think the bodabra's width would be good enough in order to, it, it wouldn't be high enough in order to stack those. And I think by the time you got down to the center, you'd really be pushing that um, to its limit. Are you headed out? Yeah. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of our three ribbons, just like so. So I'm going to even these up and I'm going to start with about an 18 inch tail. So right here is 18 inches. So I'm going to pinch, pinch, pinch. So these are my, my wannabe tails for now. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to go ahead and hold this on to my first peg. Actually, I prefer to have one that's a little bit more snug in there. This one. Okay. Then from here, you're simply going to take and you're going to grab all three of those in a nice little stack. You're going to go up and over the center, just like so. You're going to pull them nice and snug, just like this, okay? And from here, we are going to grab our first wire. This is what I should have done, first of all. I am going to take my first set of wires. I'm going to go up and under. Oops, trying to get that up and under. So I'm going to go ahead and secure this right now to my peg. So I'm just going to kind of we're going to twist this on here a couple times. So I'm not really good with the whole floral wire thing, especially when it's a thin wire. It's just hard on your hands when you get older. And I'm going to wrap this one around all the way up to the top. So all I've done is just secured my ribbon to the peg. And then this one here at the bottom, there's a little nail at the bottom of the probo. And we're just going to wrap this wire here. We're going to tuck this right underneath our board so we don't get that wire confused with anything else that we're doing. Okay. Now, we've gone ahead and added our wire here. We're going to go to the center. You're going to pinch that ribbon to the center. It's going to get really super thick. And I'm just going to move these out of the way for now. Just so they're not impacting anything that I'm doing. And just like we're doing it with the, um, what's my call it, uh, the Probo. You always want to make sure that you're doing a twist so that our nice right side of the ribbon is to the outside. So now we're going to come up. We're going to go over this first set of pegs, okay, pulling it pretty tight. See, then I can let go. Once I get it around the pegs, I can let go. We're going to pinch. This is a really super thick ribbon. Pinch here, okay. I'm going to flip this over. I always have to make sure that I'm flipping it in the right direction. Nope, had it the right way. Flipping it here. I'm going to go up and over your peg. 
There's our peg. Okay. This one kind of came off. It unspooled. But that's okay. Back to the center. Every time we're at that center, we're going to pinch. And now, because we've already got, it's starting to get really thick, we need what's called a helping hand wire. So at this point, we're going to take this wire. We're going to feed it under the left or right. It doesn't matter. I'm just trying to pick this up enough to feed that in. This is why we put that center loop in there. Okay. And I'm just pulling the ends of this tight so that I have them even, evenly dispersed because all that ribbon's gonna get a little hard to hold. So we're going to take, and we're gonna twist. Why is it that every time I go to do that, I can never twist and get it on there tight enough. I always end up letting go. Okay, tight. Here we go. I'm twisting it the wrong way. Right here twist and then I'm going to have one kind of come up to the top and one kind of going down here on the bottom so that all this is going to do is start holding all of my wire towards that center peg so that I can let go. I can grab my stack of ribbons and then subsequently place those over the pegs, pull them nice and tight. I like to wait until I get both sides on, which means this one and this one before I use the helping hand and tighten that back down. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back on here really quick. Kind of got upside down. There we go. Put that back on. There we go. Twist. Okay, we've got to get this pretty side back to the outside. So I'm going to flip it over. Grab all three. Loop it over. Keep your stacks nice and tight. Pull it nice and tight. We're back here to the center. We're going to gather, pinch. Okay. So I'm going to flip this over and remember that up and down wire I had this now I'm going to take I'm going to pull it nice and tight twist it back up one at the bottom sorry my bow dabber sliding there's that so all this does is give your hand a break so that you can grab the very next set. And now we're gonna loop, loop, go back. And then every time we're going back to the stack, we're going to um, use our helping hand wire so that we can free up our hands again. Okay, back here, up and over, nice and tight. So we keep those loops looking amazing. Okay, we wanna pinch. Get everything down, twist so that we've got the bottom up. We're going to go up and over our peg, pull our stack of ribbons tight again, back to the center. Pinch. Okay, get them to where they're ready to flip. Now we've got the top wire right there. Keep grabbing the wrong wire. There we go. Here's the bottom. Here's the top. We're going to take, twist those nice and tight so that I can let go of that stack and then get ready to put my loops back on, nice and tight, pull them nice and tight, going past 
our peg point. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Flip it up. Okay. Go up and over our peg. Pull it nice and tight. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Flip it up. We've got the bottom wire right here. Top wire is already here. This is why I love pipe cleaners when I'm building my ribbon. Back up, back here. Hang on just one second. Let me make sure I'm getting your questions. Um, Charlotte says the wires make it too complicated for me. What the wires do is basically just give your hands a break because sitting here trying to hold this all while you're building it would just fatigue your hands. So this is what's called a helping hand wire. So we just pull this back. Restack my ribbons so they're all nice and pretty. Okay, come back to the center point. Pinch. We're going to flip. Is the up? Is the down going up and around my peg? This is where we're going to need that helping hand wire again. So we're back to the center. We're going to flip it up. Here's the top. Here's the bottom wire. That's why I just call them the top wire and the bottom wire. Because all it is is to put a couple twists on there so that I can let go. Back over here. And back to the center point. See how thick this is getting? Because this ribbon <laughs> is like really super good quality ribbon. So we flip, going over our last loop, pull this back to the center. We are going to pinch, flip this up, I'm going to use the helping hand just to secure all this right here. We're going to push this stack forward. And then let's see, we wanted about 18 inch tails. So let me just measure this from the center. This is about 10. We go all the way out. Let's see. Let me just measure my tails really quick. Let me try to get 18 inches here. So right to the center of my board, right out here, we're at 18 inches. So now we are free. Okay, now we have this mess that we need to contain. So what you wanna do is really, trying to not impact my bow. You wanna try to push it as far forward as you possibly can. Let me go ahead and do a couple of twists more on this. Since this wire is not gonna really do anything, it's this wire here by pulling it up and the one at the bottom now we are going to compact this as much as humanly possible it's going to be a pretty thick stack there we go. So now I've got a total of four wires present. 
the ones that are securing everything to the post and then my helping hand wire. There is no way I can co possibly compact this gap anymore. And this would be the amount of stuff that is actually happening or, you know, going on inside of your um, Bodabra if you tried to do this on a Bodabra bow. So now, super simple, now that we have these here, we're going to remove all of our pegs. This is usually the easiest way. Some of these are in pretty tight. I actually had my husband add some of these wider or longer um, pieces because when I got my Probo, it didn't have enough to go all the way through, plus to still have them here on my spool holder. So those are all set. There is our bow. We are going to move this. I'm going to grab my fluff board. grab one of these wires when I went to pull my bottom wire off it actually pulled the nail out of the probo so I want to take this top one which is what's holding not everything together but just the majority of the bow so really quick before Go ahead and secure this. Okay, now I've got them all both ready to go. Okay, so. There we go. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook this onto my fluff board, super simple enough. We are just going to take these wires. I'm going to attempt to loop them under my hook. And I'm actually gonna try because I don't want this to slide around. Should have made it a little bit longer so it would go to the end of my board because I do have a nail peg here. So I'm just trying to get this on because I don't want to just have it secured on there just by one wire. And there we go. I like to turn it sideways when I'm fluffing because just like what we do on our um, fluff board when we're building it like from the Bodabra point of view, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is our center, okay? So we are going to start from the bottom when we fluff and we're just going to pull out. I'm gonna start with the candy cane stripe. Then I'm gonna go with the red and then our North Pole is gonna come out here. And, and I prefer to work one half of my bow at a time. So we've got that separated. And so now I'm going to grab the red from my stack. I'm just going this way. So red is going to come out here now. Here's my red. Then I'm going to do the North Pole. And then my candy striped. 
bow. And then we're going to do the North Pole. Then we're going to do the candy stripe and then the red. So we're just separating our trio of loops as we work our way down. Then we're back to candy cane stripe, then red, and the North Pole. Okay. And then from here, we're doing red. Right here, North Pole, and our candy cane stripe. Just like so. Okay, now from here, this is our center. So really quickly, I'm going to just use this. I'm gonna do candy cane. We're gonna do the red, and then our North Pole. Just like so. Okay, I'm gonna flip my board around so I can actually work the other side. Just like so. I'm gonna take my tails. I'm gonna push my tails to the center. And now we're doing the same thing. So I had the um trying to get the one. We did the candy cane on this side. So I am going to go with, let's do red stripe or the solid red here. Okay, then we're gonna go North Pole and then the candy. And then from here, we're doing North Pole then the candy cane, and then the red stripe. And then from here, we're doing candy cane, then we're doing the red, and then the North Pole. Now we're back here to the red. Oops. Candy cane, or not candy cane, North Pole. Okay, from here we are in North Pole. Then the candy cane, and then the solid red out to the side. And then lastly, oh no, we still have two more to go. So we are right here. We're gonna do candy cane, red stripe, north pole, And then up here, red stripe. The North Pole. And our candy cane. And now we get to do all the fluffing and shushing. Because now we have a really full bow. And so what we want to do is make sure that we were really pulling those loops out and away from the center. But you can see how incredibly full this bow is. Oops, just kind of dented my camera a bit. Everything up, everything pulled out. Sometimes you might have to go back into the center and just make 
some readjustments. But you will get one incredibly super full bow. So now it's just a matter of connecting the sides. And so you just fluff to your heart's content, making sure that, you know, ribbons line up where you want ribbons to line up. You can just reallocate, move loops around. Like if it feels a little thin, just kind of spread your loops out because you've got multiple layers in here that you have. Just like this. And then you have one gorgeous, incredible, ugh, I'm trying to think about how tall this would be. Let me grab a tape measure. And let's see, I want to say this is about a 10 inch high bow, but it would look gorgeous on your tree. And I think one of the trees that we're actually doing is a candy cane tree. There's our tails. Let's see if we can get this. Let me flip this around this side. Let me turn this. Let's first measure it. See how high up it goes. There we go. Um, start with the right side. Um, it's about about eight and a half to nine inches tall. It is widthwise from bow to from loop to loop. You're looking at about 18 inches in diameter, not including the tails. Um, Kim says, "What size wire gauge do you use?" Um, I am using 26 gauge wire. Anything thicker or lower in number, like. 22, 24, that's going to be fairly um, thick. And then it's going to be really hard for you to work with to, to kind of tie everything all down in place. And then if you use anything lower, like a 28 or a 30, it's going to be so fine that by the time you try to take in, tighten that, you run the risk that you could snap your wire. And then if you snap your wire, then you've got a straighten everything all out and then basically just redo it and um, start refluffing again all over. And then if you wanted to add longer tails to this, it's super simple. You would just measure out the length of your tails. And then at the very bottom of the bow where we have our wire, you would basically measure out your tails. Like if you wanted 10 feet, on each side, like 10 foot, you know, cascading tails, you're gonna wanna go 10 foot on one side and 10 feet on the other. So that by the time you put them together in the center, you have 10 on one side, 10 on the other. You would just add those to the wire at the bottom of your bow and just wire those in. So it would kind of be like this, where you would just pinch it together and then you would wire that pinched part into the bottom of your bow and then you can have really long tails um, that cascade all the way down. So from here, um, we have all of our tails that are throughout. I'm trying to get this one to go that way. Let's put the red in the center. Um, 
going to go this way. Go red. And you would just work all those back down and through and refluff. And then you have a gorgeous, what they call a tree topper bow, so that um, this is now ready to add to the top of your tree. So, and you would wire it on using the wires that we have the whole thing together. You would take those wires and you would just twist them around the top of your bow and then just go ahead and let your tails cascade down. This would probably be the point at which your tails are all cascading down because this is all our tail central post. And then once you have it on the tree, obviously, because you can only fluff it so much here, once you have it on your tree, you're gonna wanna re-fluff it and give it the look or the desire that um, you want for your tree topper bow. But super simple, lots of fun to make. Like I said, if you wanted to use this as a door decor ribbon, um, on your interior doors, most interior doors are 24 inches in diameter or width. So on an 18 inch, it's gonna be beautiful because you have six inches on either side with your tails cascading down. You could take your ribbon, um, run your ribbon across and then run your ribbon vertical tag your bow right into the center and you have like a perfectly wrapped door or you can do it on a package if you have a large package that somebody is getting for the holidays this could be a large package bow a car bow this is what this is about as big of a bow as we could possibly get um, using the pro bow so what questions do you guys have that I could possibly answer for you. I've been trying to um, answer them as I see them pop up. So I've got Kim's comment. Um, so I love making these. Um, and the Probo the Hand is pretty much the way that you can get a pretty concise ribbon without having to measure both sides. So as you watched as I was running it through the pegs, it's automatically calculating the inches on both sides so that when you go to fluff it everything kind of lays down in that staggered look all the way to the bottom so it's beautiful all the way through so any other questions where'd you get the ribbon um tam tamper really quick uh the candy cane striped ribbon came from craft outlet the solid red came from shinoda design center which is a wholesaler in california and then the north pole ribbon um was from crinkle designs so that's where all the ribbon came from and i think that is it so um don't forget next week is thanksgiving week so um, I hope you guys all have an amazing and blessed time with your family and friends. Um, we will be running, what is it, Black Friday specials on Black Friday. We're also doing Small Business Saturday support. Um, there's something for Sunday. I forget what it's called. I always just say, you know, support your small business um, again on Sunday and then of course on Cyber Monday. So make sure you guys are doing that, um, and taking advantage of those sales because they only come once a year. Um, happy Thanksgiving to you as well, Peggy. YouTubers, um, you can still participate in the sales. Just make sure you're going over to my website, which is catscreationsandmore.com. You'll see lots of amazing holiday specials that'll pop up on um, Thursday and Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I will talk to you guys all very soon. Have an amazing week, everyone.